Now, matrix method, uh, the first thing that you have to uh, be aware of the, the matrix that you need to use will be given to you. And uh, the matrix have two parts. One is for the bending part. Okay. So the matrix that we need to use, there will be uh, two parts. One is for the bending one. The other one is uh, This is another one is to to cater for the effect of axial axial force on the stiffness. Okay? So this the content of this. Okay, you don't have to remember. This will be given to you if the question asked in the appendix. So you need to make use of it. So the steps involved. Uh, the steps involved is. You have to, if you are given a problem like this, for example, then if you are asked to solve this, then you have to divide this into. Okay. We won't ask you to model it into many elements. So I think maybe only one element, one element per members like this. So the steps involved is you have to. I give you the steps involved. This is a very lengthy process. And you have to be clear about the steps. Okay? For each of the member, for each of the member, okay? let me use the symbol here easy. So this is a member okay, or element. So for each of the member, you have to, to get the K1. Then, okay. But this to get K1, K2, and K3, it must be in uh, this is in global coordinate. And how to get this? I will come. It must be in global coordinate. Okay. Then you get the K for the whole structure, which is a summation of the K element. You first have to get the K for the element first, one, two, and three, then, but it is in global coordinate. Okay, I will. So next, what is the meaning of to get it in global coordinate? Then you add them up to form the big K, which is a structure stiffness matrix. Then finally, you have to use the to get non-trivial solution. Then the determinant of K must be zero. Okay. Then from there, you solve the determinant, then you are going to get P. You are going to get the, the value of P. So depending on the degrees of freedom, you will get two answer or three answer. If it is only one degrees of freedom, then you get only one answer. So that is the P critical. If it is two degrees of freedom, then you get two answer for P. Then the P critical will be the smaller one. It will be the P critical. So this is the overall step. Okay? But then to get this, the most time consuming part is to get this. This is taking a lot of time to get this. So how to get this? Let me go in detail. Okay?
to get this, you must get the B matrix. Get the B matrix. And then after that, then only you can calculate the K1. The K, this is a So to get B matrix, eh? B matrix is you relate the local displacement to the global displacement, then you get B matrix. For each element, you have own B matrix. Okay. Then what to do with this B matrix? You have to multiply this B matrix to this one, this one, and this one, which it is at element level. Okay. Multiply from the left-hand side by the transpose and multiply from the right-hand side by this. Then you get this, which is in global coordinates. Okay. Do the same thing for element two. Do the same thing for element three. Okay. Now I have already uh, marked your assignment where you solve this problem as one of the questions. Then I will give it back to you after I photostat it, so you can see. I think many of you get the answer correct. So that is the steps that you follow, but it is very time consuming. Okay, so you have to practice your finger before the exam and then write very fast. You have to. Okay, so on, uh, once you get this, and this is the most time consuming part because you have to multiply this, multiply, but this has many, many zero. Zero, 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 many zero. So you must be familiar with when there are many zero. So it is the calculation, the multiplication can be made simpler if you take advantage of the many, many zero. Okay, there are many, many zero there. I'll give you an example later. Now, once you form this, okay. The next step is to just combine them. But when you combine them, remember, you combine, there are two parts. Yeah? For column, you combine this and also combine this. But for beam, you don't have this. So beam only contribute to this part. For example, this member. This member don't have this part. This member and this member will have the part which is related to the stiffness matrix. So you, after you get this, they will be at the same same size. The matrix will be the same size. Then, if provided you get this B matrix correct, then you can just add them up together. But when you add them up together, be careful. Your E value, if they are not the same, E two times, two times, one time. So be careful with the E value, E I value given to the column, and also E I given to the beam. So because in this part, you have EI value here. Here you have L value here. So you have to use the L for the corresponding member. Okay. Now, how to get this B is the thing that you need to. This, I give you an example how to get the B matrix in this case. So for this particular example, if, if it is Sway, 
it is uh, sway a lot. You allow it to sway. When you allow it to sway, then this possibility it will become Remember, we want to find we want to find matrix method. We want to find p critical. Our aim is to find p critical. Okay. So our aim is to find p critical that makes this shape possible. Okay. So for this shape, we have translation here. This point allowed to translate. So you are going to have. You are going to have a degrees of freedom there for translation. Then this one also allowed to translate, but in our analysis, we don't consider actual shortening. We assume the length is the same. So this one also have the same delta. That point also have the same delta. So delta one is the translation of join that is the global degrees of freedom okay global degrees of freedom now So, okay. so joint C also will have the same translation because here in our matrix method, we don't consider axial deformation. We don't consider axial deformation, which means the member length remain the same. There is no axial deformation. Then the second thing is we have translation here. So it is delta 2 is the uh, rotation. E, okay. And delta 3. C also have translation, uh, rotation. So if we if we consider this, then the size of this, yeah, the size of each of this matrix, each of this matrix in element coordinate system, when we do this, do this, do this, it will become three by three, because your degrees of freedom is three. Which means you have three displacement, including uh, translations and rotations. Okay. So then the, the, if degrees of freedom is three, delta big, delta one, delta two, delta three, then you are going to get this, um, the size of this will become three by three also. So the final matrix is three by three. So this is the, the steps that you need to know identify this. So given the problem, this is fixed, fixed, so it is uh, zero. So what happened? This allowed to translate or no? Yes. Then you have a uh, degrees of freedom there. Can it rotate? Yes. Then you have another one. Okay. The same thing here, but here we have delta one equal to delta one here uh, because the translation, they are the same. Whatever translate here is equal to whatever translate there. But rotation are uh, one here and one there. Okay. So how to get the B matrix? In order to get B matrix, you need to know this. Okay. You need to know this. So to get B matrix, then this is where you need to separate. You need to separate them into 
one element, two element, element number three. Then each of these element has its own local coordinates. Okay. So this one we have, uh, and uh, we have it, the displacement and also the translation. So we have to start from here. When you want to start from here, you have to take note of the coordinate system. In uh, in our rotation, yeah, rotation clockwise, clockwise. Okay. In our formulations, we put this as x, we put this as y for each of the member. So, if you start from here, this is your x. You start from here, this is an x. If you start from here, this will be the X. Okay. And then the Y is the direction of Y eh, is coming down. This. Okay. And for this, the Y is. We have to know what is the third direction to decide where is the Y for this. For horizontal, it's easier. I think X and Y. For X and Y. Uh, station. Wing. Eh? Z is like that. So in the exam hall, I'm going to see everyone doing this into X and Y. Turn like this first. Cannot. X and Y. And now I cannot, cannot think now. This is X and Y. X and Y. Okay. This is X, Y. And then now you turn this, so it becomes X. You need to get this uh, coordinate system correct. Eh? X, Y. So the third axis is your Z. So that one is the Z. It is pointing there. So this X, Y, this is X, this is Y, this is Z. Correct. So when you come here, you have to point the third. If the student look at you, this one is to determine this, eh? but once you get used to this, then you can get it fast. We have to know this direction because later the local displacement will follow this system. So why why the Y is here is because your X is, your Z is always towards the plane of the paper or the whiteboard. Then you, then you turn your X using this. Then this one gives you the Y. Yeah, your Z is always pointing towards the plane. And this one gives you the X. It follow your member from starting end to the ending. So you turn this and this gives you the Y. Okay. And this one is correct. This like that. Like this, like that. And this, and then this one you have to turn. Yeah, this one you have to turn. This gives you, it gives you the Y. Okay. Then here the local, the local delta one, which is the translation, 
is opposite to y. So here you have delta 1 opposite to the y. Then you have rotations, each of the member clockwise, delta 2, and here delta 3, clockwise delta 4. Okay. So that is why we need to get this correct in each of the element, the y direction. The x already fixed, starting to ending, starting to ending, starting to ending, so you know where the x is. But you have to know where is the y, because your delta for displacement in the local axis is pointing opposite to the y. So each one of these has delta 1, delta 2, 3, 4, and then is also there are 4, 2 here and 2 there, but you start with 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. So that is the step that you have to be aware of fast so that you can get this. Then only then you can get the B matrix. Okay. Now I show you the B matrix. I take only this example of uh, this, the B matrix, how to get this. So the first thing that you need to relate to is delta 1, relate back to the global 1. So delta 1 is fixed. Delta 2 is fixed. Delta 3 is, okay. You can put it either way. Eh? Delta 3, you can put it as delta 1. Okay. If you put it at your delta 1 like this, yeah, your delta 1 is like this, then it becomes negative. Okay. So delta 3, delta 3 will be negative delta 1. Or you can put it, you can consider this as uh, follow this. You, if you follow this, then your delta 1 become going that directions. So delta 3 will be, because we have to assume here, what is our delta 1 and delta 2? So delta 2 we assume as uh, clockwise. And then delta 4 is equal to delta 2. So in this case, the B matrix is you have to form this. Okay. B matrix. One, two, three, four. We have, uh, and then here, uh, another one is one. This delta 1, delta 2, uh, this B1 has nothing to do with uh, delta 3. But we want to expand that so that the size of this, they are all the same. So you add one more here. So when you add one more here, so we look at the first equation, this 0, so 0, 0, 0. You add one more here because we need delta 3 then to make this all the same size, 3 by 3, 3, 3, and 3, 3. Then this always has four rows. The second one also 0, 0, 0. The third one is you have only negative 1, 0, 0. And the final one, 0, 1, 0. So this delta 3 does not appear here. So we just add one here and then one more column of zero 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 zero. So this is B one. Then we proceed to B two and proceed to B for element three. So once you get this, then you can get the this one, this one, and this one. By 
using the equation that I show you just now, you have to multiply the original one, yeah, the original element which is given to you in the appendix by this transpose from left hand side and by this trans uh, on the left hand side, which is um, after you get this. This is the the one given to you in the appendix. This everybody the same. This one, everyone, every element will have the same form except the e the e value, the i value might be different. But the content inside will be the same. But only the e i value, the l value you have to use for the corresponding element. So this with the e here is the one that is given to you originally in the appendix. That is the original equations, which is the same for all elements. But you have to transform that in the same global coordinate system. Then only we can add them up together to get the structure stiffness matrix. So this is how we get B1. Okay, then you proceed to B2, then you proceed to B3. And this is the most time consuming part. Then after that, after you get this, get this and get this by using this, this and this, do these multiplications, you just add them up together because each one already in the same size, okay. which is the same as this. So that is the First part, which is the most time consuming one. The second one, you add them up together. Okay. Yeah, actually, we do not need to, uh, you do not need to, I think, uh, relate to that. You do not relate to that. But the important thing is there must be a there must be um, whether translation is translation is zero any translation or any rotation okay? because eventually when we solve when we solve the final equation it will give us it will give us the correct it will give us the mode shape it will give us the mode shape. Because what we get is P critical, and then finally uh, we can, if you want to solve, we can get the mode shape. So to your question, no, you don't need to relate to that, but you just need to know whether there is any translation or any rotation there. Okay. So because if I put this on this side, then this will become positive. Any questions, uh, somebody? Okay. So the next one, this is the most time consuming one. The next one is to get this global structure, which is summation of each one of these. Okay. So if there are two elements, you combine two. If there are three, you combine three, but make sure they are of the same size. Then. Using the condition determinant k is equal to zero. 